check that out folks that is a black racer that snake is roughly seven eight feet long what you're seeing is its tail right here but look at the diameter of the body here it's huge it is currently hunting black racers are very good snakes they take care of all the venomous snakes that could be in the area. In this portion of North Carolina, there are no venomous snakes, no copperheads, no rattlesnakes, nothing like that. That's the first black snake that I've seen in over a good year. I suspect that the snake actually lives down here somewhere. It was about two years ago, I was coming down the road, which is right up there. It comes over here. As I was coming down the road, something long and black stretched from one side of the road to the other side. That black line eventually started to depart the road as it went across the other side. It was huge. My friends, welcome to this episode of the Outdoor Gear Review. This is a military surplus trip. And this is going to be a good one. In this episode, we're going to be using a combination of natural elements with some very cool pieces of gear. Hmm. It looks like I have some firewood. What do you all think? My plan is to head up here on the mountain. There's another trail that I'm going to connect to. Then I'm going to follow it to something rather neat. As I'm hiking up this mountain, everyone, I wanted to tell you all that through YouTube, I have been able to set up a merch store. So you can get hats, shirts, hoodies, coffee cups, and so on. So make sure to check out the description box down below for the link. Also, if you want a patch, that is available only on the website. We've made it to the trail, and down here, that's where we're going. As I'm hiking through here, the deer are just scattering. They've been laying down today. There was a group up there, and also there was a group down here. <laughs> it's pretty funny. This is where I'm going to stay tonight, right up here. As far as the temperature goes, right now it's about 65 degrees. I'm hot and sweaty from coming up the mountain, but overall, it feels pretty good. Cheers, everyone, cheers. With this rock outcropping, this is one of many. Here at Lone Wolf Mountain, there's roughly 20 of these. This is the biggest one, it's about 75 feet tall. So what I have here, everyone, is a Russian MRE. This is a full day's worth of food, and I can't read a single bit of this. <laughs> Ooh, oh man. Boy, does that freaking stink. Obviously, something's happened here, something's open. This absolutely stinks. Like, really, really bad. So, Taking a look here, it looks like some meat or something exploded. I'm not really sure. Everything in here is wet and sticky. So whatever this is, this is good. I'm sure this is like some sort of like potted meat or something. 
and there's quite a bit of this. We have some crackers. All of that is good. We have some matches. Okay, that's good too. We have some fuel tablets, some tea, some sort of bar, an energy drink, I suppose. And this is what's opened. I think I'm going to go with whatever this is for lunch. Now, unfortunately, I have no cell phone service here, so I cannot translate and see what exactly this is. That's a shame because, actually, it smells pretty good, but it looks kind of weird. Very mushy, looks like beans, maybe chicken, I'm not really sure. Let's go ahead and give this a shot, and then I'll talk more about this adventure and what I'm doing here. This looks like something that's going to give me like the worst heartburn I've ever had. Ever. I guess we'll find out if I'm right about that or not here in a little bit. Cheers, folks. Hmm. Actually, that's not bad at all. <laughs> it's not bad at all. I'm not 100% sure what I'm eating. It looks like peppers, carrots, chicken, beans. There might be some tomato in there. I'm not sure, but it is pretty good. With this overnight adventure, this is a military surplus trip. And any time that I do a military surplus trip, I focus on different countries. With this episode, it's all about Russia. It's all about Russian gear. Now, of course, I'm not making any political statements, nothing like that. This episode's about the gear and the gear only. When it comes to the channel, I don't talk politics. But at the same time, I don't avoid things either. So let's say that I'm on a road trip, right? I'm cruising down the road. I see a gigantic sign for Trump. I'm going to film it because it's interesting. If I see a gigantic Biden sign, I'm going to film it too. If you can't handle seeing a Trump sign or a Biden sign, that's on you, not on me. Anyways, with this trip, I have some interesting gear. There's no doubt about it. I have a backpack, which really doesn't have much in it, but it is huge. The biggest component is the Russian sleeping bag. It is massive, folks. It takes up more than half of that backpack. It is rated for like 32 degrees, it weighs like eight pounds, it's huge. There is a tarp, which is actually pretty cool. I also have a sleeping pad. I also have a Russian shovel and knife. In addition to those components, I also have some other gear. For an example, this is a United States military cook set. I also have a canteen cup set from Sweden, I think. Don't hold me to that. Check the gear list down below if you have any questions about this gear. Unfortunately, when it comes to this Russian stuff, you're not going to be able to buy it. I planned this trip and purchased all of this before the war in the Ukraine started. After that point in time, there's sanctions. You can't buy this stuff any longer. So I got all of these components off of eBay, super cheap. This box, because it's wet, absolutely stinks. It smells so incredibly bad. Recently, I put up a road trip movie that Susie and I did last year, or the year before, I don't remember. Anyways, we're driving across the country, there's this gigantic, like, handmade Trump sign, or hand-painted, it's on the side of the road. Hey, I filmed it, I put it in the video, it's interesting, right? So the video goes up, I receive an email, I don't remember the person's name, he was coming unglued because I showed that. <laughs> I had the greatest time laughing about that. He went on to start talking about how great he was, and how he was like the ultimate environmentalist. It was super, super funny. <laughs> I asked him for his address so I can send him a box of tissues, but uh, he never replied for some reason, so. The thing is, folks, I don't talk politics, like I said before, but I'm gonna show things that are interesting. If you can handle that, great. If you can't handle it, great. And that goes with this Russian gear. As far as this giving me heartburn, uh, yeah, <laughs> I think it will. <laughs> what I'm going to do is this. I'm going to finish up my lunch here. Then I'm going to get started on this. That is where I'm going to sleep tonight. I'm going to clear that out because that's where I'm hunkering down tonight. I'm going to use this natural element here, this rock outcropping as my shelter. And later on tonight when it starts raining, I'll be nice and dry.
this used to be a bushcraft shelter. I came out here for a wintertime trip. The snow was coming in sideways, so I built this and I slept on the ground over here. So that's why there's all of this wood. So what I've done here, I've basically removed all of the debris, all the sticks, all the leaves. Now I'm going to put down my bedding. And I'm going to begin with a tarp that I've sprayed with permethrin. Permethrin will kill bugs. Spiders, ticks, ants, anything that comes into contact with it will die. So I'm going to put that down. By the way, it's completely safe to humans. It only affects insects. Anyways, um, I'm going to put that down, then my sleeping pad, then my sleeping bag. Then I need to think about a tarp. Not to protect me from rain or anything like that because I have this shelter here, but from wind. If it gets windy, the wind will come from the west towards the east and will basically just slam right into this rock, right into me. So if I was able to make a shelter with a tarp right here, I would have full protection and I would stay warm tonight. The question is, how do I do that? I'm going to think about that for a second. <laughs> this is strange. My sleeping pad came with, I think, a chocolate bar. That's still good, actually. <laughs> that is a little bit strange. Am I going to eat it? Yeah. It's chocolate. This Russian sleeping bag is gigantic, everyone. That thing is huge. It's less of a mummy and more of a rectangle shape bag. It's really, really interesting. There's also a sheet that goes with it if you wanna snap it in, but I don't want to. Because I'm not ready for bed now, what I'm going to do is turn this bag upside down. That is going to keep bugs out of it. As I mentioned before, I've treated this ground sheet with permethrin. So I don't have to worry about anything crawling on it. But with this rock wall, there are spiders everywhere. So that is something that I have to be concerned about. Spiders falling down into the bag. If I turn it upside down, I should be good. This is the tarp that I was talking about. This is a very interesting product right here. As I'm looking at this rock, I see no easy way of attaching this tarp to it, so I'm not going to. I could come up with something where I run guy line all over the place. I'm not going to do that. What I can do is set up some bracing against this rock and then tie to it.
this is what I've come up with. I've used four sticks basically as the support I tied to those and the weight of those sticks is basically holding that tarp down. As is, I have really good protection from the wind and also from the driving rain if need be. Out of all of this Russian military surplus, I think this is the coolest piece. This tarp is pretty sweet. This is the Russian Army Ratnik 6SH120. It's a universal Russian shelter and it can be used as a tarp, an awning, a stretcher, and so on. This is the Russian knife that I picked up off of eBay, and I have to say, this is rather nice. It is extremely sharp, sharp enough to shave with. On the property here, there's a spring, and it's something that I've wanted to check on for a while. Since I have this shovel with me, I figure that we might go dig in it just a little bit. See if we can get an idea of the flow. We're not going to be able to determine flow rate, not to any sort of certainty, but we might be able to get a good idea of whether or not it's worth our time to work on it. The spring is right here. It's seeping out of the hillside from underneath these trees. This tree has fallen over. What I need to do is come back with my chainsaw, cut this up, cut that up, clean this out, dig it out. I can tell already, folks, that the rate of flow here is pretty good. It's rather difficult to estimate flow rate when it's spread out on the ground like it is now. But if we were able to channel this, I think it's going to be pretty good. This is a consistent spring. It runs all the time, year round. It doesn't matter if it's wet or dry, it's running. What I've been wanting to do is build a spring box here. I don't need a reservoir, I don't need to collect it, but I want a spring box. I could tell by the rate of flow here that it's good enough where I wouldn't need a reservoir. I could take 10 minutes, fill up a five gallon jug, and be good to go for a while. What I'm going to do now is dig this out just a little bit. I'm going to make a channel. That will give me a better idea of the flow. Kind of centralize it. I could see how much water is running through. With that being said though, already I can tell this is worthwhile. This will work. Check this out everyone, that is much better than I expected. I would estimate maybe five gallons of water every seven to eight minutes with that sort of flow. You can see how already all of this is cleared up and that is a very positive sign. The rate of flow is so good that it's getting all of that sediment out of the way. So that is awesome, that is awesome. Instead of working on this any longer, what I'm going to do is this. I am going to film a separate video that pretty much details me taking care of this, clearing it all out. I doubt it will feature me building the spring box. I'm not sure how I'm going to go about that yet. That is something that could be time consuming, so we'll see.
It is 524 everyone and that is coffee time. I'm not going to drink the Russian coffee. First off, I can't read the packaging so I'm not sure which one it was. And second, all the secondary items were covered in whatever was leaking so most of that stuff had to be trashed but I kept like the big items. Whatever they are. I don't know. Let's see. One, two, about two and a half hours and the sun will be down. Around that point in time we'll get a fire going and we'll have dinner. You may be wondering why I'm using Sterno in a military surplus adventure. That's because Sterno has been a military surplus product for a long time. It's not used all that much today, but go back to World War II and before, and it was. Canned heat, that's what it was referred to as. Back in World War II, you were a very lucky soldier to have some Sterno, as there were numerous ways that a soldier could use that on the battlefield. When it comes to Sterno, you may have heard of this and you may not have, but there's many instances of people drinking this stuff to get intoxicated. It's a form of surrogated alcohol, which has been denatured. In other words, it's poisonous, but that doesn't stop people from drinking it. Back during the Great Depression, people would take Sterno and squeeze it through a sock and it was known as jungle juice. The thing is, it contains methanol, so when you drink it, it destroys your optic nerves and causes permanent blindness. Oftentimes in prisons, even to this day, shady characters will make jungle juice, they will sell it, and uh, people have serious, serious problems. I have no idea why I know this. <laughs> Has Luke gone to prison? Does he know this for a fact? Talking about this military pack here for a second, folks. That is the Ratnik Raid Tactical 6SH118. It was designed to carry up to 60 pounds. All in all, I can't say it's my favorite pack ever. While this pack has plenty of pockets and organization capabilities, the torso system is adjustable, that's great. But there's a few things that are just mind-blowing to me. For example, with the waist belt here, you cannot easily adjust this. <laughs> you have to take it off, work the straps through, then you can make your adjustments, pull it tight, and all that stuff. You can't do it on the fly. I'm sure you're thinking, Luke, why is that a big deal? Well, if you remove a layer, you have to adjust the waist belt, right? To get the right fit. But yet, you have to stop, you have to fiddle with this thing. So in the long run, basically what happens is this. The soldier doesn't make the proper adjustments. The weight of the loadout ends up on the shoulders. Then the soldier's capability is reduced. He or she becomes less effective. You can tell that this pack was not built to any sort of specifications as far as like its durability goes. Throughout the pack, you will find some very lightweight, somewhat delicate materials. For an example, with this draw pull here at the top, your shoelace is stronger than this. It's a little bit surprising. While I can't say that I care for the backpack all that much, I do like this. This is a map kit. Now that is pretty sweet. I have it attached to the molly straps here. When I was hiking into the area, I believe I left one of the straps undone. So it may have been flopping around a little bit more than normally it would. That is the Russian Tactical Map Backpack. It was designed to be easily attached to a backpack and also detached, and it itself can become a backpack. The sleeping bag is interesting. That's more of like an overland thing. Nothing's too big <laughs> to even consider carrying somewhere. I just barely got it crammed inside of this backpack. It is huge. It's kind of a gamble. What do I eat? I guess I'll go with this. 
and this <laughs> and let's go with this as well everything feels super mushy and that's good because that's exactly the way I like it okay that actually looks pretty good let's see about this one okay that looks and smells like spam Whoa. Whoa, what is this? Yeah, screw it. Let's just go. I have to admit, this is looking pretty good. Let's give it a taste test real quick. <laughs> Rice and something, I don't know. Hmm, it's really unusual. It's good, but unusual. So let's try this uh, spam looking thing. Let's see how it is. It's like Spam, but it's not quite as gross as Spam. It's actually pretty good. It's close to like a Vienna sausage, but not quite. Now let's try this other stuff. Hmm. That's good. It tastes like cabbage and onions. It's tasty. Let me show you all this fire. It is super small. And because it's reflecting off of this rock, it is insanely hot. I've mentioned before in previous military surplus adventures how interested I am in World War II. Such a fascinating time. So before I came out, I looked up some facts in regards to Russia and World War II. And some of this stuff is pretty crazy. To the Russians, World War II is known as the Great Patriotic War. And it was estimated that more than 10 million soldiers died and over 15 million civilians. Russian casualties were 60 times the number of American casualties. Think of this, everyone. The United States, they lost 300,000 soldiers. The UK lost 400,000 soldiers in the war. Russia, over 10 million. Something that most people don't know is by the time the war ended, the United States sent Russia almost 400,000 vehicles, over 2,600 planes, and supplied them with 2.7 million gallons of fuel. It's pretty wild to think that Russia was flying around in American planes and driving American vehicles in World War II, but they were. And without the United States supplying them with goods, who knows what would have happened. My great uncle on my dad's side, he was in World War II. He was injured, came back home to recover, and while he was here, his entire unit was killed. That has got to be a very hard thing to live with.
it actually feels really, really good. 55 degrees, no breeze. I would say inside of this, it's actually a little bit warmer than that. When I'm in a shelter like this, I like to think about like our ancestors, the Native Americans, the explorers, the cowboys, camping out just like this, using natural elements as shelter just like this. Some would consider this roughing it, but in truth, it's not. This is pretty nice, folks. <laughs> you know, the thing is, we have it good, don't we? We have sleeping pads, we have sleeping bags, good clothing. We are blessed, no doubt about it. As far as this shelter goes, this is awesome. Very simple to set up, took no time at all. As soon as I cool down, I'll hop inside of this bag. The quality of this is not bad. Not bad for the money. Anyways, guys, gals, see you all in the morning. Good night for now. Good morning, everyone. Good morning. It's 718, about 50 degrees. It's a good night. It's a good night. I slept really good. I, I'm not really awake, though. I have, I've been up for maybe 20 minutes, and I, I just feel out of it. <laughs> I need more sleep. I was up pretty late last night listening to my audiobook. Just having a good time. At some point in time, maybe midnight or something, it started raining. More of a sprinkle, I guess, than anything else. Yeah, I think it's coffee time, folks. Let's get some coffee. You know, folks, I wouldn't say that I had heartburn last night, but I definitely had indigestion all night long. <laughs> I'm not entirely sure what I ate yesterday. It wasn't bad. It was different. Let's make it a strong one, folks. I need it this morning. Three packages of Taster's Nasty. Whew. That should be illegal. We have this, this, and these. That's breakfast. I hope it's not like a potted meat thing. That really sounds awful right now. <laughs> what is this? <laughs> oh, that's interesting. It's uh, jelly, I think. What is this then? So it's like a little pouch of chocolate or pudding or something. I'm not sure what to think about chocolate and jelly for breakfast. So let's try this out.
The jelly is excellent. The crackers, they stink like that wet cardboard box. That's not a good thing. Let's try the jelly and the chocolate. It's not the worst thing in the entire world, but it really doesn't do anything for me. But I do like the jelly though. That's pretty good. Cheers, everyone. Cheers. It's hot but good. As far as this military surplus adventure goes, my favorite piece of kit is that tarp. That is sweet. Unfortunately, I did not get to use this. Not this time. But that is a really nice blade. My plan for the day is pretty simple. Basically, I'm going to get out of here. I've had a really good time, but I cannot eat any more of this Russian MRE. I really don't have much left. There is a bar somewhere. I'm not exactly sure where I put it, but I'm done with that. Without a doubt, this has been a great trip. Again, a very interesting trip. Interesting military surplus. It's always interesting to see how military surplus compares to like other countries. So as far as this stuff goes, it's interesting, but I will say this. When you compare this stuff to the United States military gear, there is no comparison. It is not even close. In a way, this Russian stuff feels kind of cheap, almost like it was like Chinese goods or something like that, if that makes any sense. Everything just feels a little weak. I think that's the most surprising thing. Let's see, I do have some shout outs to make here before I go. The first shout out goes to my buddy Mike. Thank you so much for the sleeping bag he sent in a U.S. Forest Service sleeping bag. I've never seen one of those. It's pretty interesting. The colors are interesting too. Lisa, thank you so much for the sympathy card in regards to my dog. I really appreciate it. Greg, hello to you. Thank you, buddy. And David and Debbie, thank you so much for the coffee. That is appreciated. So those are the shout outs for this episode. I want to give a big shout out to everyone. Thank you so much for watching the channel, supporting the channel. It is appreciated. Thank you so much for joining me on this military surplus trip. It has been a ton of fun. Make sure to hit the like button before you go. It does help the channel. You can support The Outdoor Gear Review on Patreon and here on YouTube. You can join the Wolf Pack. It is appreciated. Oh yeah. On to the next. See you again soon. Strength and honor. I'm not going to eat a big plate full of chocolate. <laughs> I will finish the coffee. It's too good to waste. It's too good. What does Taster's Nasty do? Puts hair all over the place. It's true. It's fact, actually. <laughs> I had a viewer write in, a woman, I won't say her name, but she drank some Taster's Nasty and then sent me a photo and she had a full beard. She was pretty upset, so. but I, I warned her. I don't know. <laughs> All right, everyone, I'm done. <laughs> Goodbye for now. Strength and honor. I'll see you next time.